So doctor, how often do patients come to you after a failed surgery looking for answers? So let's define a little bit more about that failed back surgery. So I see patients like this a lot, someone who's already had an operation, mm -hmm. who is now seeking answers. Why am I still suffering? So I revise a lot, a lot, a lot of other surgeries. So what's failed back syndrome? Imagine you have spine surgery and you're still suffering. In, in essence, to me, that's failed back syndrome. Now, you can break the causes into two types. It was either the wrong patient or the wrong surgery. Now, that oversimplifies it, but if... It or the was, wrong surgeon. Or the wrong surgeon. I mean, I was going to add that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that sort of goes along with the wrong surgery. If the surgery was not performed correctly, then the patient will have continued symptoms. Also, if the patient did not have the symptoms that were amenable to surgery, they will continue to suffer. So there has to be complete congruity between the diagnosis mm -hmm. and the reasonable, hopefully minimally invasive solution. Can you imagine for a patient having to come see a, a, you or whatever after a failed back surgery? It's I mean, scary. Just how emotionally draining is that? And especially think about it, the old classic surgery oh. with six months of rehab and then you're not better. And then you're not better. And it's like all that for nothing, but that's where you come in to help. So what is your evaluation process to not only psychologically help this patient, let's be honest, uh, be a friend and tell them, you know, trust me, I'm going to get you there, because at this point it's all failed. So how do you evaluate? You know, and compound that by the fact that this may be someone who can't provide for their family. Exactly. Someone who can't cook, someone who can't go to the store to buy food. So to break it down real simply, because the truth is, it is not that complicated. If it's the lower back, the majority of these patients had fusion in situ, meaning the old classic way where the anatomy was not restored. They have screws and everything is immobilized, mm -hmm. but they are not in a better place in terms of their anatomy. There was no improvement. With the neck, it's the same issue. You immobilize a segment, and that's the classic thing to do. Take the disc out and then put a plate with screws. And what happens? 25% of these patients over 10 years will have a problem above or below the fusion.